That's more of a close-up lens, and it also lends itself really nice to having that background parallax. It's a close-up lens that lends itself. <laughs> Hello, my name is Valentina V, and welcome to 4-Minute Film School. Today, we are shooting a 360-degree table scene. It's gonna look like this. Are you ready? Let's go. I'm going all in. Ugh. So when I saw this location, it kind of gave me like den vibes, man cave vibes. And I thought, why not flip it on its head and make it a female poker playing den? The story here is we have our lead actress and this is her house. This is her den where she plays poker with her frenemies. And she walks up to the poker table. She looks at both of them because she's invited them here tonight because one of them has betrayed her. So first we see a pullback shot where we reveal the friends and then we see a full 360 around the table where we see each of their expressions and we try to determine which one is the enemy. So here we have our camera. It is the Alexa Mini and we have some rehoused Nikkor lenses and they were rehoused so they have a declipped aperture. In front of the lens we added a filter of half glimmer glass. This is a diffusion filter and it really catches on all the highlights in the image and makes them have a little bit of shininess, a little bit of bloom. So I wanted that because this is supposed to be a glam, luxurious sort of look. We are complementing that with the glimmer glass. Having a steady cam is really important for these shots because we can easily switch from pulling back to going around. And also the steady cam has a center of balance. So we can do the shot where we look at down at the table and then up at the girls while moving around. It's a multi-axis move. Okay, so Zach, I'm actually really fascinated by Steadicams. I'm not a Steadicam operator. That's why we have you here. Mm -hmm. What's like some terms that cinematographers should know when talking with their Steadicam operators? For sure. So on set, it really comes down to efficiency and being able to communicate as easily and quickly as possible is super helpful. So some of the terms like you were using before, like underslung and standard mode, that means the camera is up here in high or down here in low. We'll say low mode or high mode. Orbiting means that my lens is pointing at the subject while it's moving around the subject. Booming, which means coming up and down or jibbing and such like that. Dolly in or truck in, that means that we're actually coming up and over. Uh, when we're talking about tempo, music videos, pacing, things like that, um, I actually use something called spice levels. So tapatio is like you know, we're, we're moving it up, pico de gallo, you know, we're slowing it down, we're making it all chill and stuff. They give me a one and a two mark, but everything in between, depending on what kind of take we want for coverage and stuff, that gives us a quick communication as to how fast the pacing is, how we're moving through the day, and so that we can easily just go from that and not have to come back and do a rehearsal every time we want to come back and change the shot. All right, Tapatio. <laughs> this is four minute film school, not hot ones, Zach. <laughs> so the main thing here with the production design is also tied to lighting. I'm trying to have as many practicals in the back. We have lights in the sconces up there. We have floor lamps. I want that space to feel a little bit dizzying when you're going around the 360 and having those pinpricks of light is really going to help. Because we're underslung on that camera, we are seeing a lot of the floor. That's why I had a rug put here because otherwise it would just be this like bright sort of consistent carpet and the rug really helps break that up. Just like when you're shooting with white walls, you wanna put some sort of pictures on it to break up the walls. The same thing with the floor, we put a rug here to break up the floor. We have a lot of practicals here and they have B7Cs inside so we can change their color temperature. But what I like about them too is that the shades are textured. So it's not just like a big white blast of light. Everything has a little bit of vintagey feeling to it. The reason I have the door open is because it makes sense for the shot. If she was in the bathroom, got a text message that one of her friends is being shady, she emerges from the bathroom and then the door is still open. Even though we don't see her physically emerging from the bathroom, we'll still see it in our little 360 orbit. The question is, what color temperature is it? Because it's a Nova, it's color temperature adjustable. So I could have either had it be tungsten and match all of the other practicals, or I 
I decided to play around with it a little bit because our villain is sitting here and her hair light is red. We gelled that 300D2 with a red gel, so why not also have a little bit more red playing in the background? Because when we're in that orbit and we're all the way over here, what are we seeing? Just her, that red hair light, and a little bit from the door. In order to have a little bit more play in the background to give more dimension to this dungeony looking scene, we have some practicals up here. We have bulbs in our lamps, but we also added this little ping, this little highlight, a gallery light, if you will. It is a 60D with a spotlight mini zoom and we're putting barn doors on it so it could really look like a little gallery light. But this gallery light, the 60D, is more of a bluer light. It's daylight and all the other lights are warm. So we are going to gel it with an amber gel. We can gel it with CTO, which is more on the orange side, pushing into tungsten, but amber gives it that more like grainy, woody texture. And that's what we're going for with this highlight. The real challenge today is how do we light soft, beautiful key light on our actresses, but it's a 360 shot. So to help me out, I have Danny from Honey Crates. Hello, Danny. Thank Hello. you for being here. Hey, Valentine. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, introduce yourself. Danny Boldroth. I'm the owner of Honey Crates. So the challenge is how do we mount a light directly above the table and still have it soft? And one suggestion I came up with was the soft box which we just created to fit the Nova P300C. We took the space light version and made it a box. One suggestion we had was to use a high roller, use a menace arm, and arm out over the, over the, directly over the table using the soft box. It's a, a quarter grid, crunchy grid, they call it noisy grid on the outside. Comes with three different sets of targets. You can take the target out and have just a direct light from the aperture. Or we have a full grid, a half grid, or a quarter grid, depending on how much output you need. So Danny, what should we know about rigging a menace arm? Well, they did a very good job. One thing is, counterweight. Whenever you put something out, you have to balance it over on this side. So using this, they tied this strap down to the stand and put a lot of weight on the stand. That's what offsets the weight that's sitting out about eight feet from the center point. The ratchet on top actually keeps the, the rail itself from bowing. And this strap actually is a counterweight that holds it back down to the stand. To separate each actress from the background, I wanted each of them to have a hair light. Mm -hmm. These two, it was easy because the walls are closer, so we could just put stands behind each wall and rig it on stands. Mm -hmm. But this one is a challenge because we can't have a stand there. We're literally seeing it in the shot. So one suggestion we have is taking a 10 inch C-clamp with baby pins because that's what the light takes as a receiver for the baby pin clamped it to the wood, existing wood on the structure, put in cribbing in between so the clamps jaws don't damage the wood. And that's, and that's got a safety on from the light to the uh, C-clamp in case the light knob would come loose, the light can't fall, it's still attached to the C-clamp and you have a clean, clean rig. Yeah. yeah, and then they added that Fresnel lens in front of it and the barn doors. The Fresnel really concentrates that light in a beam directly behind the person's head. And then the barn doors close it up a little bit so it's not spilling oh, all over the ground. Else, yeah. So for the orbit shot, uh, I wanted to have this in frame. It wasn't in frame in the wide, but now that it's here, I wanted to add a little bit more light to this bookshelf. So we decided to use a light bridge. Which is a mirror, high quality mirror reflector and they have them, I think, from six by six, maybe up to two by two. And what's nice is this, is you can see it's very lightweight. It, it only takes a C-stand supported. I really like that it's right here because otherwise we would have had to rig this entire light up there. And it's a lot. It's the 300D2, it has a spotlight mount on it, and it has the CTO on it. The CTO is just to warm it up a little bit because when we bounce it and then it goes on to the furniture, we want it to be warmer to match all of the rest of the other lights. And what's awesome is that it's like so small, so you can definitely control that little spill. It's like a little slash. In days before, we would go to the store and just buy a glass yeah, mirror. Just and then if you mirror. dropped it, we'd all hear it and that'd, it'd be into your mirror. This has a nice little mounting tool that just slides in. You tighten it right here. And now you can put it into a C-stand or screw it to the wall or whatever. Yeah, baby pins. It's, 
It comes with this on already attached and then these, these things just slide off. In order to add a little bit more atmosphere to this, originally I wanted cigarettes and like little smoke coming up from the cigarettes, but we couldn't get those. So instead for atmosphere, we brought in a Hazer. This is the Mystic from Master Effects. And we just ran it at full power for about 10 seconds and then just wafted it through the whole environment. And after it settled, it just looked beautiful, diffused, and it really gave a glow to those highlights. Three, two, one, pull. All right, that dolly looks good. Let's move on to the orbit. For this next shot, it's actually going to be an orbit around the table to reveal who is the actual villain at the table, who our lead character is suspicious of. And for that, we start with the least suspicious person of all, the friend who's just laughing and having fun. Then we go over, reveal our lead character, and she's she's conflicted. She's like, okay, which one of you, which one of you? She definitely knows it's not her. So who's the villain? Right there. And she's just nervously looking in her drink. She's not sure about it. So the whole point of the orbit is to reveal their personalities. It's to reveal who we think the villain is. And we're supplementing that with the hair lights. So. Her hair light is this orange glow, which is just like the rest of the lights in the room. Her hair light is another tungsten glow, but her hair light is red because she's the villain. This whole side is open. I mean, look at it. There's nothing here except people. We can't show it, right? So in order to have a more fuller orbit, we start at the table and then we tilt up while orbiting. So it's a multi-axis move. So we're looking down at the table. That's where we start, sort of over your shoulder. You throw that green on there. And then, and then we angle to your face, right? So then you throw the green, we angle to your face. So you start talking, laughing. Oh my goodness. We come over to you, you collect it, you collect it. You're suspicious of both of them. You're like, I don't know, I don't know. We go over to you and you're like, yeah. All right, let's go. Three, two, one, action. That's a wrap, everybody. Woo! And that is our episode on this soft overhead lighting in a 360 table scene. Cheers, Danny. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And uh, say hello to my little friend. Oh, my God. Oh, this is, is Bob. Uh, hi, everybody. And uh, be sure to check us out on uh, honeycrates.com and uh, follow us on uh, Honeycrates Instagram. And thank you very much for bringing me along. Oh, Bob, it was so nice to meet you. Oh, very nice to meet you too, V. I really appreciate all your help with the lighting. Oh, you're very welcome. Well, if you want to follow Bob or Honey Crates, you can do so in the links below. If you want to follow me, I'm there too. Please subscribe to the Aperture channel and like this video because we have a lot more coming up and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Until next time, happy shooting. Uh, is it okay if I uh, give you a hug? Um, I'm, I'm COVID. COVID. I'm COVID free. I'm COVID free. Dan, tell her I'm COVID free. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I just can't resist. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>